We're going to look at um, a complex ion from both the perspective of valence bond theory and crystal field theory. And we're going to see the ar electron arrangement of uh, both theories will agree with each other, and that's very important. So um, I have a cobalt-3 ion with uh, six fluoride ligands attached. And as you know, this is a weak field ligand. And so I would like to first show you the valence bond theory approach to this for cobalt-3, okay? So cobalt-3, can you think off the top of your head how many d electrons cobalt-3 has on its 3d level? And that's very important that you're able to do that. This turns out to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is a d6 ion. What's important to know about D6 is that we could force these two electrons to pair up with these two, opening up those two orbitals. So cobalt-3 is a very good example of what we call in class a switch hitter. Okay, so here's our 4s and our 4p and our 4d. So I'll label those. And let's see how um, cobalt and the fluorides interact. Because fluoride is a weak field ligand, it's not going to uh, provide the pairing energy which is going to cause these two electrons to pair with these two electrons. So the hybridization is outer d orbital. We end up with sp3d2. So again, this is our outer d orbital complex. And this is our ground state. So will there be an excited state? And of course the answer is no. So we go directly to hybridized And we have our 3D as it is in the ground state. Again, I'll repeat, this is a D6 ion. And here we have our hybridized. And that is going to be sp3D2. Here's our pairs of electrons coming from the six fluorides. And so what we have here are six sigma fluoride bonds. There's no excited state. Now I would like to look at this same ion from the crystal field theory. And as you know, what happens is there is splitting. So let's take a look at cobalt-3 from that perspective. So as you know, with splitting, three of the d orbitals, and that's the 3d orbitals. So we're talking about the interaction of these electrons, or these, yes, the, the interaction of these electrons from the ligand with these electrons from the d of cobalt. As you know, these electrons approach differently uh, uh, the different orbitals in, because of their arrangement. So therefore there's a splitting. There's less interaction with three of the d orbitals and there is more interaction 
with two of them. We call um, this level of the 3D, we're going to call that EG, and we're going to call this level T, 2G, and that comes from a German terminology. The, the G and the T and the E are from German words. So it won't mean anything for us to uh, tell you what that is. All right? So this delta, again, is our splitting energy. This is a small energy or a small split because of a weak field ligand. That means there's not going to be a big difference between the energy of the EG and T2G. If there was a very large difference, these two electrons would be forced to, um, to pair up with these. So what we say in this case is that you can see that this structure matches this structure. We have four unpaired electrons, just like we do here. So we can see that the crystal field theory and the valence bond theory agree with each other. We would also say that the delta or the crystal field splitting energy is less than the pairing energy. Another uh, description I would like to give is that this is considered high spin. That is a high spin structure. 